Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge at MyBet.com. My name is Dylan and in this third video, as promised, we'll be playing two simultaneous Storm cash game tables and putting into practice basically all the theory that we covered in the first two videos. Alright, we raise up this limp pot. And, you know, generally four times the big blind plus one per limper, as a general rule, is good to adhere to. He limp flats, and that's his entire stack size. Um, doubtful he has a queen. We just shove, given his remaining stack size equal to the pot with our overs. And wow, he flopped actually the 73 to 1 trip queens. And we eat some pretty serious shit here. <laughs> we were, again, pre-flop 70% ahead of the guy, completely dominated. He flopped the miracle, and yeah. That's poker, guys. 73 to 1 trips on the king-queen. Bummer. Alright, queensies. Raise them up. And down here, guys, when you're playing ring games, you can, of course, you come in here, enter your total pot, the amount to call, your effective stacks, uh, stuff like that, and use this in real-time play. It's also very useful. Uh, here we get a check. We represent the king with our c-bet on the flop. And take it down uncontested. I'll just say a few things to tilt, actually, right now. Tilt's not necessarily that you just play mindlessly, right? That you... Yeah, contrary to popular belief, it's not some big... Here we're just going to overcall. Ace queen on the button, offsuit, we got position, and we'll see what comes. Um, tilts, I mean, there's all kinds of tilts. There's there's small tilts, there's big tilts. Um, after two checks, huh. Maybe they're also in overcards. We take a positional shot here after two checks. Yeah, no dice. Um, but yeah, speaking of tilts... <laughs> um, you know, uh, feeling frustrated like like I am a bit right now. Um, stuff like this, uh, not not really feeling the vibe, not feeling the flow. Maybe you'll find a lot of guys on tilt. It's again, it's not a big uh, off the chain kind of explosive kind of tilt, but more that they're, they're just calling more. They're chasing they're chasing draws when they don't have the odds. Stuff like that. Um, starting to play really really wide ranges. Uh, wanting to see a lot of flops. That kind of tilt also exists, right? Kind of a loosey goosey tilt. Uh, there's also the tilt where you feel kind of invincible and you end up, you know, maybe you're on a big card rush and you end up pitching back a few hundred big blinds because you think you're going to be able to push guys around, you know, and that's not going to be the case forever. So, again, we'll just limp one here with the suited max stretch. And yeah. Just yeah, just be aware of that. Be be mindful of um, of your senses and you know what you're feeling at any any given card table, both online and live. And you'll be able to save yourself a lot of cash by doing so. Uh, here we're going to just flat flop again. This is again 73 to one again. So we flop those trips. So now we're going to check versus two players and hope that one of these mid stackies give it a shot. And mid min bet by this guy. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Now, you can just re-raise this up directly, um, because it is too suited, but I want this guy to, uh, I wanted him to take a shot. And now I am going to push, because these guys' stack sizes are smaller than the pot, and I don't want to see another spade here. And if somebody flopped, you know, sevens full of jacks, that would just be hella bad luck, but it could be the case, who knows. Uh, he'd probably calm me down if he's got any ace here, so I think we've, you know, with that shove, we're going to knock guys off of flush draws and we'll get called by any ace, uh, maybe overpair, stuff like that. And we got no problem with also just taking it down with our jack 10 in that spot. So yeah, good result, finally. <laughs> uh, and here again, baby pair, just raise it up under the gun. And again, yes, you know, lip call is also an option there. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> Open fold. <laughs> no, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but. Yeah, what to say. Um, either limp call, uh, depending on the bet size, right? I wouldn't limp call a four bet without the odds for it. Um, but yeah, limp call two bet, or just raise it up and then call the three. Stuff like that, you can definitely do. Here we're gonna play this for pot control and see if the big stack guy, he checks behind us. Uh, ace hits, and again, um, yeah, not feeling it. Um, this is kind of a bluff induced line out of position. He does check and we take it down with the king. If he had bet there, 
I would have I would have called that if it wasn't too big of a bet, um, just to give him the chance to to bluff it uh, in position. And yeah, we end up taking it down with a weak king. Uh, weak king. He check min raises, guys. And you guys remember what check min raise means at the low stakes? It means get the hell out of the pot <laughs> unless you've got it and really got it. So another ace king. Well. Wow. And we do exactly the same thing here on the button, both with our strong and weak hands. 3x, 4x, depending on how, you know, whatever you guys choose to do. You can change it up from time to time. Uh, again, from the small, a lot of guys are going to raise it up, you know, one, maybe two big blinds more than usual uh, to compensate for the out of position disadvantage post flop. And again, with jacks, guys, you're going to see over cards on just over 50% of all flops. We'll make a C bet here. I like turtles. Oh, he's really, he's tripled up in a bit. He's doing well. And yeah, he flats us. Again, this guy looks like a better player. I've also got him yellow tagged here from before. And I've got to, I've got to believe it here out of position. Um, he should definitely bet this as a float line. Um, what you can also do is if you think he's a, a better player, right, a savvier player, you can also check raise this knowing that he is probably floating you. Problem is when he flats and the kings, any king, any ace is definitely on his list and our jacks I think are pretty much toast there. So we let that go versus a guy, wow, another pair of aces, versus a guy that could also, uh, yeah, take us downtown for uh, <laughs> 100 big blinds plus. All right, we get called here. Nothing really to protect against. Let's make a half pot bet. He flats, and now I shove. Pot to effective stack ratio is more or less one to one. I get re raised by this guy, and I'm not going to flat that. So we shove here, and he lets it go. And again, I'm not shoving my stack size. It may look, look a bit absurd to a lot of players there, um, especially relatively new recreational players. I was actually pushing his stack size, which was more or less one to one with the pot. Uh, here we flop absolutely nothing. Uh, let's. Yeah, if this were two suited, I would definitely opt for the float line. Uh, my spidey senses are saying get out of there, <laughs> so I'm not going to float. Basically, it would be a call and then betting the turn um, as a float move, but yeah, again, without stats, it's, it's damn tough. And we three bet it up in position here, hope to steal the button with that raise. And if this guy mid-stack shoves, one of these mid-stack you shove here, we definitely call everything with ace-king. Uh, given the dead dead money, the fact that he could be pushing also weaker aces, um, you're also flipping versus all under pairs. Yeah. Inside straight draw, can't be the four of spades, but we take a shot to see if we can buy it. Get flatted now again. This is a cool one. So every four and every seven, right? So we got a double barrel gut shot here. Very cool, and a lot of people don't see that coming. And we're gonna go ahead and double up here on the turn as a continuation of our flop aggression and take it down as a semi bluff. JJ Dynamite, raise it up. And that's also steel, guys. Again, steel doesn't mean with a weak hand. It just means a positional raise when it's folded to you and you're in the cutoff or later. And same idea here. Another steel raise here with a 97 suited. We get three bet. This guy goes all in. And I'm just going to flat this here one time. You can come over the top, but again, it's a fellow big stacker. And I just want to see what flops. So... We, we flopped the top set, which is just an absolute monster, and there's nothing to protect against. I'm hoping he's on queens or better here, and I just flat. He's out of position, so hopefully he'll haul off again here as a double barrel. He does, and now we can put him all in here on the two-suited board and say hallelujah. And he should probably show us, yeah, just like we thought. And again, you know, I, when I flat the three bet there uh, with the jacks, I'm basically looking at my jacks as... Um, yeah, that, that call actually is a set mining call. Um, if I don't see, you know, if I flop an over pair of jacks, it's super, super dangerous because if he's on queens or better, we're toast. If he's on the ace, king, or queen, um, it's unlikely that he's going to give us multiple streets of action. 
Another ice king. Wow. And some, you know, sometimes you can also just flat that guys, especially versus under the gun razors. But we opt for raising so that we have both what position and initiative. All right, he checks. Let's peel one off. Opt for the delayed C bet here in position. Make sure he's not trying to suck us in. After two checks, guys, especially at the low stakes, you can pretty much count that as a done deal. A uh, double check at the low stakes normally means exactly that, weak. And yeah, I haven't seen much variation from that principle playing here at the storm tables. Interim status report in cash right at 13 bucks. And yeah, playing on here. Another good thing is too, guys, when you're playing when you're playing the storm tables, you're gonna have a lot more fold equity when your stack is more than the the maximum table buy-in. People are gonna respect that a lot more, they're gonna see that you're winning. Uh, there is something to that. You're basically your the respect you're gonna get when you're when you're deeper stacked is much greater than um, when you're smaller or just, just at hundred big blinds, right? They all know that when you're above twenty bucks, you basically you bought in for the maximum more than likely and you've gone beyond that. So you're winning at this point, you had a little momentum on your side, and again, yeah, there seems to be more respect in general when you've got the deeper stacks. People are gonna respect your bets more, they're gonna, they're gonna be more afraid of you. Um, here we just flat, he auto checks, so he had the uh, check fold button clicked, we bet that. Hope he didn't have a two. <laughs> and he lets it go. You see, when you see those really snap, snap checks, that's exactly when they click this, um, when they click this check or fold button. More than likely. And then you just pretty much bet any two on the flop, and you'll take that down quite a lot. Then again, guys, I mean, I'll show you down here. Um, my steals calculator is also, well, I like it. <laughs> it's my baby here. Um, whenever, you know, if you actually are playing with, with your HUD and you see that your, your opponents in the big and the small one are folding respectively 75 and 90% to all steel raises, you can, with a three and a half uh, X raise, you can basically raise fold versus any three bet for positive EV approaching infinity. But then you definitely have to be able to fold. Um, yeah, so this is also included here. But yeah, unfortunately, again, we're, you know, we're playing statistically blind. Uh, it's good fun, but we don't have our stats with us. I'm making a lot of moves, hopefully, that are educational for you guys, stuff that maybe you don't don't know. I think, uh, especially the information that we shared with you in the initial videos, the theoretical videos, will definitely be useful for, um, yeah, broadening your, your understanding of the game uh, and especially showing you how you can get creative with different different board textures, different flops, um, draws, stuff like that. Flop another set here. And we got a fellow deep stack player, so that's real good. And this time, uh, you know, it's probably over with. We'll see. But, um, damn. I didn't want to just check behind there with the two suited board. That's a bit dangerous. Okay, queen, okay. For cheap, and again, wow, we flop. You know, seventy-three to one against guys when you have a non-paired uh, whole whole cards here, and you flop that. Um, a little check behind one time. Unfortunately, the third diamond comes, so we're not as excited about our trip queens anymore. But we got the jack as a blocker and potentially a draw. Let's see if he does. Okay, and now we want to raise that up. So we raise one here, small stacker. If he checks, we're gonna make a smaller bet because we'll have the same fold equity probably with like 50 cents bet that we would with the full three or a push. Yeah, bit, yeah, bit less, but you don't have to bet very big um, versus these kind of guys after they check. Save your cash, you know. I mean, if he check raises us here, then you know if we go ahead and put out a buck, then it's an extra two big blinds that we're gonna lose. And we'll probably have a similar result, like I said, betting a bit smaller against this year, kind of small stack players. All right, and we're approaching the one hour mark here, and actually we're a bit beyond that now. So what we'll try and do is, um, yeah, look for maybe a couple more, a couple more hands to end the session, and then check out, maybe show you guys a brief overview of the stats there in Holder Manager. Uh, that you guys can definitely look at um, if you do have that program. Here we got the uh, net plus draw. 
and we semi-bluff into that, pick up the ace, which is a good thing. And these guys have, yeah, mid-stacks here and deep stack. So I'm going to go ahead and bet that again, trying to crease the pot and hope for the club. Mm, that's unfortunate. It's doubtful that our 10 is going to be good here. Oh, he checks. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to check behind. We do have showdown value. And let's see what he had. Didn't show. One second. If you don't see that, guys, in the storm tables, by the way, click this little button right here, the replay button, and let me just sit out. Yeah, that's what this looks like. And then, you know, even if he doesn't show down, then whenever there is a showdown, he's forced to show his hand. <laughs> so when you click that button, you can basically bring that replayer up. And then we see that he was playing basically the Queen Nine offsuit. Didn't even have a club all the way, all the way to the river. And yeah, LG Sam. Yeah, keep that in mind. So that looks like a very lucrative player for us. So we get a big stacker here that then calls, and we're calling here. And with our call, we close the betting. It's important, guys. If this guy could still shove after the fact, it's a it's a bit more marginal call. But with that call then, I'm calling for set value, I'm closing the betting, I'm insured to see the flop, no set, no bet, and I check out. But we definitely had the eight times that we need um, to make that call for set mining. All right, the ladies. Okay, again, turtles again. <laughs> And we just three bet it, re steal from the small. Wow. He comes back over the top. Mm hmm. And we got a little history. I like I like my queens versus the entire range. Nice. Get it in really well. Hold your breath. <laughs> wow, and they actually hold. Imagine that, we won one. We won it all in push, but we were the market favorite. Always nice. Always nice. So on the up and up yet again. So we pick up our flush draw to boot here, uh, plus the inside straight draw, and we definitely, which I'm just going to pop that. And some guys would even shove given his stack size. But we take that down. Uncontested. And this guy completes. And you wanna, you know, if a guy just completes, you wanna raise up. Yeah, great percentage of yeah. I mean all the way up to any two. This guy checks here, and I just want to make a half pot bet, see if I can't catch a little bit more of his remaining stack. Shit. <laughs> the one card you didn't want to see was a heart, and so, yeah, but you got to calm down with your set because you got to redraw, of course, to the quads or the full house, even if he does have it, and we've got to shove that. And here we see better overs after a check. 27 he calls us with, and that's nice. Take that down. If Birdman checks here, we can double barrel this, but um, if he bets, of course, it's the out position float line I'm telling you guys about all the time. Extreme strength in general, and this time I'm just going to opt for a check behind and probably bet a non-diamond card here if he checks again on the river, because that's the only way we're going to be able to take that down. If he bets into us, as he does, then it's a big, big fold. Pot control in position. King, queen suited. Let's see what we can do. Min rays under the gun. That's just flat. In position. Decent holding. Flop top pair. Backdoor flush draw. And we'll bet into that very often. Suited Jake on the button. Raise it up. The sad knight. Let's it go. Ruhaj checks it. We represent the queen. He check calls. We pick up the inside straight draw. Check behind. No dice. And let's see what Ruhaj has to say here. 
He checks it. We can only take this down with a bet. And we bet half pot. He's only got a full one time and three for us to break even in the long run. And... He does. So, half pot bet, guys. In position play, in position play, in position play. So this is another good one, guys. You see the 10 here, right? So it's every 7 and every jack. This is a double-barreled gut shot. A lot of guys don't see that, right? And that's that's actually an 8-outer if you include the 7 and the jack of spades. And here versus this guy one time, I will go ahead and call that. We pick up the perfect card, right? So 6, 7, 8, 9, and now we got the 10. So theoretically, the 10 jack is the nuts, but it's just less likely here. And I don't want to fool around anymore because I don't want to see another spade, right? So I'll make a bet that's just just under pot, and if he shoves, of course I call excellent, and he has aces and eats it. And again, slow, pay, slow playing aces, guys. <laughs> what are you going to do? That's Again, that's the reverse implied I was telling you about. Do one time for Doyle. Oh, nice! Okay, we... Yeah, we catch the Doyle and actually flop a playable hand with it. It's one of the worst hands you can get, but, um, you know, one time for the Godfather, and we hit. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we actually get action. Uh, you know, it's, of course, we're hoping he's not on the set of fives here, but we'll just raise that up and say, Mr. Doyle, wherever you are, we appreciate all you did for the game. Actually, uh, Landsman, also from my my hometown. Uh, at least my home state of Texas. And yeah, caught one for the Godfather there. Listening to music that he definitely wouldn't want to hear. <laughs> well, we're doing a little lounge background action and uh, Willie Nelson in the back. Well, definitely do in the future, but uh, that was not on the list for today's video. <laughs> Up top two again, wow. And again, guys, this is 49 to 1 against when you have a non paired hand and no action. Oh, good. We're on the uptick, guys. We're going to play this out. We're going to play this out until we take a hit. <laughs> or until, you know, we, we double up again and our momentum. But let's, let's say it like this. And you know, I don't want to play it out until I lose. That's, that's the wrong way of saying that. But I want to play it out until I feel like I lose momentum. All right. And that's, that's how you should end a lot of your sessions. You know, end it on a good positive note uh, on the upswing, if at all possible. Uh, you will, if you play enough, definitely experience downswings. I'm speaking from personal experience. And yeah, that's just part of the game, guys. Here we're gonna isolate the limp room um, from the button. But yeah, so that's you know when I'm on when I'm on winning session, flop the middle pair and the nut flush draw. Brilliant. Uh, he bets it, and actually I'm gonna just pop that as a semi bluff push with a lot of fold equity. And wow, nice. Ah, God, we got it in so good. Spades, that's so sick, man. That is too sick. Uh, we got that in brilliantly because we were blocking his ace and we had the flush draw, so even the king of spades wouldn't help him. Ah, oh, that's so sick. So, for example, loss of momentum, that would be one. <laughs> you know, bad beats um, after the flop comes. And now, so if I take another hit, for example, that's going to be the end of the session. Um, we've had, I think, a lot of really good educational hands. A uh, lot to talk about. Certain parts have been a little bit dry. Um, those we'll try and cut out. <laughs> yeah, just waiting for a wave. Not a lot of action there. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can do time-wise. Raise those kings, guys. Don't just limp that. Um, we saw that a couple times already in this very session. So, yeah. Momentum's still with us. Can still feel it. Um, but if we take another, another bad beater or so, we're out. And then I'll show you guys basically how the session ran for these now right at two hours of play. And again, yeah, the actual video you guys are probably seeing, it's um, been reduced to uh, the hands that were most interesting. Let's over flat one here. <laughs> with the uh, with over limp. With the over limp, we actually steal the last position. Damn, good move. Yeah, we'll let it go. Looking for that cheap flop. Didn't happen. We flop overs, as you will, guys. Two times and three flops. Basically, 66% of the time with Ace-King, you're going to 
absolutely whiff, as we have. And we make a bet in position, get two cards for the price of one, right? Check behind, pick up a king, beauty. Uh, 54, 67, everything has missed unless he's on a set. So we want to make a value bet here. Uh, just over half pot. 